Welcome to Out of the Woodwork. Thanks for dropping by to talk about the circular saw. Not everybody has a table saw, especially beginners, and you might have to cut down, say, a huge piece of plywood that won't come and fit on your table saw. So you need the upside down mobile table saw that's also known as a circular saw. The circular saw does the same thing as the table saw, it's just that you're pushing the blade through the wood instead of pushing the wood through the blade. It also has the added benefit of being mobile and being able to go to a project instead of having to bring everything to the table saw. Here in the US, circular saws come in a few different blade sizes. There's seven and a quarter, six and a half, and five and a half. Now there's others that are smaller and bigger, but those are the most common. Like most power tools, they come in a corded and a cordless version. The cordless version usually has a smaller blade. This one's got a six and a half inch blade, and this corded version has a seven and a quarter inch blade. You'll also see different motor placements between saws. Both of these are called sidewinders because the motor is to the side of the blade, and because it directly turns the blade, it's also called a direct drive. You also might see a worm drive saw where the motor is more situated behind the blade. Now worm drive saws spin slower, so they've got lower RPMs than a sidewinder like this, but they've got more torque, so they tend to be, in general, more powerful than sidewinders. The parts of the circular saw are pretty straightforward. You've got a back grip here and then a forward grip. The blade sits on what's called the arbor and then there's a washer and a nut that tighten the blade down. There's a spring-loaded guard here that moves out of the way as you push through the cut. It also has a handle so that you can manually move that out of the way if you're doing a plunge cut or if you're making a really shallow cut and you need to start a little further up. This is the base plate or shoe of the circular saw. This one is made out of aluminum, but you can find them in a magnesium alloy. This base plate can be adjusted by loosening this knob to cut up to a 45 degree bevel. On the rear is a latch that will allow you to adjust the depth. This saw is corded. It's got its power trigger here on the rear handle and you have to depress this safety switch and hold it in order to pull back the trigger. If you don't, trigger's locked. To replace the blade, make sure it's either unplugged or the battery's removed if it's cordless. A lot of saws will have a button somewhere on the saw that actually locks this blade in place, locks the arbor in place. This saw does not have that. It's got this handy wrench that's mounted on the back. It slides in there. But because circular saws spin counterclockwise and the nut tightens clockwise, it really doesn't need a lot of torque to get it tight. So with my saw, I just hold my finger on the blade and usually it will loosen pretty easily. So I remove that, remove the washer, move the blade guard out of the way and the blade is free. If you have a hard time getting this out and it won't come free, especially when you buy the saw new, sometimes it'll be tight on there with no blade, so there's nothing to really get leverage on as you try to turn it. Then you can put the wrench on there and strike it, and a lot of times that will free it up. Real quick, I wanna talk about the types of blades you could put in your circular saw and why you would use them. So if you look at this piece of wood, you can tell that the grain is running side to side. So if I was to make a cut across the grain this way, that's called a cross cut because the grain is running this way and it's cutting perpendicular to the grain. Now if I make a cut this way along the length of the grain, that's called a rip cut. This is a 40 tooth blade and that means it's got 40 of these little carbide teeth. This blade is an 18 tooth blade. So generally the less teeth that a blade has, the better it is for rip cuts and the uglier cross cuts it'll make. The higher tooth blade has more teeth so it's cutting more often and as it severs those wood grains, it does it a lot cleaner. This blade will cross cut just fine, especially if you're just cutting to a rough dimension, but it'll leave an uglier cut with more tear out than this blade does. This blade is not the highest tooth count that you can get, but it's a good compromise between a clean cross cutting blade that can still make good rip cuts without too much trouble. So to put the new blade on, you just do it in reverse. Put it on the arbor, the washer goes on and it has two flat sides that match the flat sides of the arbor. The screw goes on there and then I'll just hold the blade with my finger and then tighten it down as, as tight as I can get it 
this way. You could also wedge a piece of wood to keep the blade in place and that will let you tighten it down. But just make sure you don't tighten it down too tight. Circular saws are known as either blade right or left. So this one's blade right because the blade's to the right of the motor. And this is set up to be a right-handed saw. So you put your right hand on the back grip and then your left hand goes on the front grip and you use it like that. There's quite a bit of debate about how you should use a blade right or left saw because of the fact that some people like to look at the blade as they cut. Really, these are manufactured so that you look at the gauge in the front, but a lot of times that can be off, and then once you get further up on a piece, the gauge is not even registered on the wood and you can't see it. Now, you can use a saw like this with your left hand, for instance, if I'm cutting on this side. This is a wide piece that I won't be able to reach, and I need to walk along the end. You can use it with your left hand, but there's a couple things to think about. Most dust ports on circular saws are situated sort of on the side at the back of the guard and they're meant to shoot off to the blade side. Because you're supposed to be over here on the left, the dust will shoot off to the right and you'll stay clean. If you are using your left hand and walking alongside, you're gonna get covered in dust. It's not the end of the world, but it's just something to think about. One concern I see quite a bit is because the shoe of the circular saw is so much wider on the motor side and it just has this little strip on the blade side, if I'm using it to cut the end of a piece, and I'm over here on the left side using it this way, as I get about halfway into the cut, if this piece is not supported, it's gonna to begin to sag and I lose the support under the wider part of the shoe. And that becomes pretty precarious because I'm balancing on that little thin strip on the blade side. The way to solve this is to make sure the entire piece you're cutting is fully supported underneath so that instead of the offcut sagging as you push the saw through, it's gonna stay nice and stable and provide support across the wider part of the base. There's also a discussion about using your left hand and being over on this side you can see the blade and then you think, well, I can just reach over with my right arm and hold this front grip. You are still having to lean over and you're also putting your arm across a blade. And typically in woodworking, it's good practice to never do that. Whether it's a miter saw or a table saw, you never want your arm crossing the path of a blade. If the arbor shears and this blade comes off or if it throws a tooth, You've got not only this primary stationary guard, but you've also got this secondary guard that's always gonna cover up behind the blade, whatever blade is exposed back here. And then also it's providing extra protection for above the saw where your arm would be. So I don't think it's as big of a deal with a circular saw, but with that said, it's just good practice to never put your arm across a blade. And besides, I think this is just an awkward position to keep your right hand on the front grip, look at the blade, and then push it forward and keep it straight. Now I'm gonna talk about what I think is the best way to use the circular saw, and it negates most of that discussion. If you use some kind of straight edge, especially a track guide like this or this, then you don't have to worry about watching the blade or the gauge to keep the cut straight. All you have to worry about is keeping the saw tied up against the fence throughout the whole cut. I've got a video that shows you how to make these tracks. I'll link that up in the corner. Go watch it after this video. Now these are for breaking down four by eight sheets of plywood. This is all I'll ever need for that. This one's a little over four feet so I can cross cut a full sheet of plywood. And then this one is actually eight foot long so I can rip a full sheet of plywood if I need to do that. Or you could just use some kind of straight edge like this or a level. It doesn't have to be anything special as long as it's straight. But there are a couple more steps involved if you just use a straight edge because you need to know the distance between the blade and the edge of the base because this is what rides up against the straight edge. So you've got the measurement for the piece you're trying to cut out and then you have to add the measurement for this base and do that at both ends and then put the straight edge on the marks and clamp it down and make sure it's in the right place. It can be done, it just takes a lot longer, especially if you're trying to get a really accurate cut. Before you even go to pull the trigger and make a cut with the circular saw, make sure your workpiece is properly supported. A lot of people make the mistake of supporting a piece on each side like this and then trying to cut down the middle. The problem with this is, is that as you make the cut, this piece is gonna sag more and more until it pinches the blade, causing the circular saw to bind or worse, kick back at you. I like to support my workpiece with two strips of plywood and then I'll come over and set the depth so that one tooth is below the bottom of my workpiece. That's all we need. 
And that way it'll cut into the strips, but just barely, and I can reuse them over and over again. If I just need this a rough dimension and it doesn't need to be precise, then I'll do a freehand cut with the circular saw. The base has a gauge on it. It's got a little line here, and that's exactly where the blade is gonna cut. So I'll line that up, push the safety trigger in, pull the trigger, let the blade get up to speed, and then make my cut. Make sure you have eye and ear protection and your dust mask on. In a pinch for more narrow cross cuts, you can just use a speed square. So let me show you how easy this track guide can be. So if I need an 18 inch long piece, so I'll mark 18 inches there, 18 inches here. The way this is built, the circular saw blade cuts right along this edge. So all I've got to do is line these edges up with the marks and then make my cut and it's perfectly straight and square. So you can use clamps to clamp this down, but a lot of times if you just place your hand on the back, you can make a cut without it slipping. And I do need to adjust the depth here, adding this thickness from the jig, go down just a little bit and make the cut. Once this video is over, head over, watch the track guide video, get the free plan and build this yourself. Every beginner needs to go out and get a circular saw. And it's not a tool you're gonna grow out of either. Most woodworkers use their circular saw in some way or another for their entire lives. If you like videos like these, consider subscribing. Go follow me on Instagram and Facebook at OO The Woodwork. Check down below for links and more information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.